You have just created a project that contains some configuration settings and a page that shows that the installation was successful. Now we will create an application that will actually do something. Go back to the terminal and quit the web server with Ctrl C. I use manage.py to create the shop application. The shop application is now created by Django. Open settings.py. Go to the installed apps and add the shop app to the installed apps list as the first item. The shop app is now added to the project. Let me start the web server again. Let's see if we can show the shop app by typing in the URL. Django shows a page not found error. Look at what went wrong. The URL does not work and this is because of two problems. One, Django does not know yet how to route this URL to a page. And two, there are no pages yet. So we need to do a couple of things. First, we create a view. A view is something that can return a page. Examples of views in the shop app are home, product details, and the shopping cart. But let's start with a single view, the index page, also known as the home page. We need to create a route that specifies where this view can be found in the shop app. And finally, we specify where to find the shop app. Let's start by creating a view. The Django app already contains a file for the views. In theory, you can put all the views in this file. But I like to organize them in a folder where each view gets its own file. Let me show you what I mean. Go back to the code editor and delete views.py in the shop application. In the shop folder, create a new folder called views. In the views folder, create a file called indexview.py. In the new file, I import template view and HTTP response. I'm going to create something called a class based view. The class inherits from template view and will have a single method called get. The get method will be called when Django receives an HTTP get for this view. The view is ready. Now I add a route to this view in the shop app. For this, I create a file called urls.py. I import path and the index view. I create a routes list. Each route has a partial URL, a view and a name. The meaning of these values will become clear as soon as we start adding more routes to the system. But before we do so, we also need to tell the system how to route to the shop app. Open urls.py in the configuration. This is the place where Django specifies the routes to the applications in the project. One of them is already added, admin. Admin is the administration module that comes with Django and soon you will learn how to use it. Let me add the shop routes. For this, I need to import include. Include includes all the routes from an application. 
This is how to use it. We are now ready to test the system. Make sure you have saved all files and check the terminal if the web server is still running. Any errors that might occur at this point are usually caused by typos. Django depends on conventions and the slightest typing mistake can lead to the system not working properly. If that happens, check the entered code line by line and make sure you have the exact same code as I do. There are no errors here. Go back to the browser and reload the page. That works. Your first custom page served from the web server. But there is one thing I'd like to change. Look at the URL. As you can see, the URL contains the partial path shop. But since the shop app will be the only app, we can omit it and make the shop the default app. Let me show you how to do it. Remove shop slash from the route. Let me also remove shop from the URL. That works. The shop application now runs at the root of the website. OK, let's inspect the source of the page. Perhaps you expected to see HTML in a browser. And so do I. But Django served plain text. Why is that? The problem is in the view. The HTTP response returned plain text. How can we serve proper HTML? You will see that in the next part called Templates.